Hello and welcome to a very special early edition of the Full Time Devils Takeover on XS Manchester. My name is Joe and welcome. Uh, we've got a very special gig happening tonight on XS Manchester, so we'll bring you all United Talk for an hour now, here live on, on Full Time Devils on YouTube and Facebook. And XS Manchester, if you're listening to this, it is recorded, so please don't call in now if you're listening via XS Manchester. However, if you're watching live on YouTube and Facebook, it's that time of the week where you get to have your say. Give us a call now, 0345 treble 17625. We can talk about whatever you want. But the big talking point is obviously Fellaini. The club made a mistake. Let us know your opinions on Marion Fellaini. Do you want him in the club or do you want him out of Old Trafford? That will split fans. Uh, today I'm joined by Jonathan Schrager. Good evening, Jonathan. Oh, good afternoon, sorry. I'm too used to saying good evening. How are you, Jonathan? Yes, I'm good, thank you, mate. Nice to see you. Good to see you. And uh, Daniel uh, Daniel Nardiello. Hello, Daniel. Are you okay, mate? I'm very well, thank you. Oh, I want you to do... Uh, so, so Webby and guys who normally do the show can't be with us. So I want you to do a sort of take me out style introduction of yourself uh, to see if the viewers want to turn the lights on or not uh, Jonathan uh, to the to the camera you know I mean I, I wish I had sexy music but I don't <laughs> let the uh, banana see the split <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah I mean probably what like like we were joking off a uh, failed Lothario uh, man of leisure yeah um, yeah. Can agree with that. Keep, keep all, I see all the lights are still on there. <laughs> yeah, the lights are all still Chris on. Kept People his light love on. it. Uh, and Daniel, yourself, I mean, uh, the, there is a, a story behind you which is, is incredible as an ex player. Um, how would you sort of introduce yourself to the full time Devils fans? Uh, ex United youth team player, managed to make a few, few games in the first team. Um, big United fan. Um, probably since I signed for United, but yeah, follow United now, big United fan, and always looking out to see how they do. But Jonathan, he's not just, mm. you know, ex United, but he's, he's doing himself a disservice there, isn't he? <laughs> he is, yeah, he is. And he's also failed to mention that you broke records. He's a very modest man, is Arda. <laughs> uh, you, you broke records, didn't you? What were the records? Trogs probably knows better than I do, actually. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jonathan, what were the records for those United fans uh, watching? I think it was, it was goal scoring records, wasn't it? Under 19 level. Under mm. 17s and 19s. And then Rezies, yeah. I think, as well, managed to score a few goals. Just couldn't. Take it that next level, unfortunately, but injuries, injuries to be fair, injuries yeah, to be yeah. fair. Uh, we'd love to have. Uh, well, thank you very much for joining us for the next uh, forty-five minutes. We'd love to have your say again. If you're listening, we aren't live, but if you're watching on YouTube now and on Facebook, we are indeed. So give us a call: oh three four five treble one seven six two five. Our first talking point is going to be Marwan Fellaini. What fans want him in Old Trafford? I'd love to speak to uh, someone on the phone now who wants Fellaini at Old Trafford next season. If you're there, if you're watching, and you are one of them fans, give us a call now, 0345 17625 Sky Sports now understands that Marron Fellaini representatives are having a chat with Manchester United uh, to continue a new contract. Uh, we will uh, be discussing that, and if any news breaks, we'll give it to you first. But Jonathan, I love your opinion yeah. on the man Marron Fellaini. The uh, guy who scored the winner against Arsenal, don't forget, Old Trafford. Yeah, um, he's he's got his plaudits, hasn't he? Like you sort of mentioned off air before you alluded to it, he does polarise opinion in some ways. Um, some people think he's representative of <coughs> the fact that United don't play uh, an attractive style of football and some people, you know, like a lot of fans do, like to scapegoat a little bit and they'll pinpoint Fellaini as one of the kind of reflections of that style bit of an ugly style of football, bit of a plan B, route A style of football. But like you say, you can't knock him at times. He's bailed us out. So I think he is useful to have in the in the squad. The problem so you'd is, give him a new contract, wouldn't you? Uh, yeah, I mean, let's sort of discounting all these comments and quotes and the fact that his behaviour suggests that he might overestimate his worth. Um, discounting all of that purely as a footballer, I would give him... Uh, another contract but then again you've got to argue that does he do, does he hamper the style of play that we all want as fans and what sort of plans how how central is he to Mourinho's plans if he gets the contract my fear is that he'll have been guaranteed a lot of first team football and not be a squad player necessarily and that's what he needs to be because yeah. can you see because this is going to be one of our questions as well so we're talking about Fellaini and we're also going to be talking about the ingredients you think United need to win the Premier League next season mm. what do you think United need so the question then turns if you do think he's going to get first team football yeah. is Marouane Fellaini the player United need to win the Premier League Daniel? It, no <laughs> No. In, in a word <laughs> in a word, in a word no he's uh, 
I agree with Shrags there. Uh, he, he, there's a place for Maron Fellaini in the club. He's a squad player. He's he's effective. He's shown his worth on, on more than one occasion. Scored some really important goals. Uh, is he going to win Man United the Premier League? Not at all. But absolutely, I think he deserves another contract. He's effective. He scores important goals. And I know some of the comments have come out uh, recently. I, I tend to agree with a couple of things that he said. I think he probably should have been sorted a lot sooner because now he's 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 open to the market and there would be plenty of managers that would take him. Um, all three managers, the last three managers, have loved him and used him and utilised him. And I think, especially playing in the Premier League, he, he's more than proved his worth for, for United over the last few years. Let us know your say. Oh three four five trouble one seven six two five. Come and have your say about Fellaini. We'd love to have you on and uh, and get your say. Um, I I see him as a player that just. He, he confuses a lot of fans, but what he does is he makes sure that he's always in your head. So if he came on against Arsenal and he didn't do anything, that would be the nail on the coffin, I think, for some United fans thinking, why is Fellaini in there? We need to be beating Arsenal. But he scored the winner, right? And no one can look past that. That is a fact. Yeah. Maron Fellaini scored the winner. And you, you have to think to yourself, it, he's sort of made himself a worth there. We've got three points because of him. Yeah. But... You compete with the likes of Manchester City and Liverpool and whoever else will be competing next season. The Premier League deserves a better class of player and I'm just going to say that as my personal <laughs> opinion. So, because it, I do not see him having such an impact on United next season to the point where we can win the Premier League. I mean, yeah, but then you've that sort of opens it up to the question of, as I'm sure we're going to go on to discuss, what, what will um, suffice to it? to bridge that gap which is a bit of a chasm at the moment isn't it it's not just a gap it's a flipping an abyss unfortunately and yep. you're right Fellaini isn't the answer to bridge that gap but you know who is and then that also leads on to the question of is it the right manager that we've got that's going to even be able to it, we could sign the best five players in the world but if Jose's style isn't conducive to that kind of football kind of you know football. it it's, yeah, it's, it's a it's a very nuanced question, isn't it? Really, it is it's many a layers to one. it. Uh, Daniel, um, what do you think about uh, the next season? Then, um, looking at the midfield, does Fellaini have that place in you there, or he's got to be the squad player? Surely, hundred percent, he's a squad player, and he can come on to good effect, like he did at the weekend. Um, I think there's, there's a, it's a huge it's a huge gap between us and City at the moment. Uh, there's, I'd say, at least five players needed. Um, and yeah, Mourinho's got his style. He, we all knew his style before he came in, but he, he, he's a winner. He's, he's all about winning games. He's not really bothered about entertaining the fans or the neutrals. He wants to win games, and that's what he's done for years and years and years. So we've got to put our trust in Mourinho. Yep. Get the get the right players in, and you know, I would take second again next year as long as it's a, a push for the title. Mm, more or less, yeah. It, 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 as long as it's not a massive gap. A like massive because you look at the would, state of the season now. We'll, yeah. we'll preview Brighton later on in the show but there's not much we can really talk about uh, I want your say 0345 117625 we'll get to Neil Neil you okay mate? Yes thank you yeah Neil what do you make then of Marouane Fellaini? Well I think he should go Really? Uh, straight off gotta just go <laughs> Yes um, Can I say hello to Danny because he used to play to Mark for my local club Exeter oh, Hello mate yeah good times I enjoyed it <laughs> Did down, you yeah. enjoy Exeter oh, Daniel? Exeter. Yeah beautiful city beautiful city yeah, I go now and again. I go because I I'm getting on now, so I don't work. So I just go like go watch my local amateur team play. Yeah, they're a good little club, and they're in the playoffs, aren't they? This year, hopefully, they can push on. Yeah, and I get went up. to Wembley last year. They lost to Blackpool in yeah, the final, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, uh, uh, Exeter would Exeter take Marron Fellaini? <laughs> <laughs> no, he wouldn't even get my local team. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine Fellaini wouldn't. You so why? So why either. for you then, Neil? Does Mourinho? If Fellaini couldn't get in Exeter's team, I know it's a tongue-in-cheek <sighs> comment, but why do you think Mourinho still plays him? I don't know. Well, I don't like Josie neither. So <laughs> you don't like Josie. So uh, so. <laughs> Ideal for you then, uh, Neil. Um, I, if, I, I'll, I'll say why, right? Because he played boring football. Yeah. We will not win the league playing like this. I'll tell you next year. If he has to change the way we play. You get the ball too slow. Pity pat. Well, you need one touch mover. You watch. Sm- I hate to say it, you watch Liverpool, Man City, Tottenham. They <laughs> move the ball quicker. We are too slow. Oh, Jonathan, you can't really argue with what he's saying. You know, what would no, you? What, hard, what point so. would you put to towards him about Jose Mourinho's style of play? If he changes the way we play, fair mm. enough. But I will give him maybe halfway through next season. And if where we are, he needs to go. 
Well, I, what a uh, statement there from Neil. Hopefully, we'll get you if you're watching uh, live uh, talking. Oh three four five treble one seven six two five. If Mourinho keeps his style of play, he we has to go. New, yeah, we do need some new players as well, don't we? And some of some of the others need to leave as well. And who who would be the first ones out the door for you then, Neil? We do, well, we need two new full bats. I don't understand why he doesn't play Luke Shaw. He says in the other week, well, about a month ago, one of the best left backs in the world. Yeah, he doesn't play it. Yeah, we, we were discussing it. We were why, discussing why it off air. Yeah. If he doesn't play it, I just to me yeah, well, I, that doesn't understand. I don't understand. Am I stupid or what? No, I don't, I don't really. He, he's just, I really don't know. I think Shaw needs a certain type of manager. He needs his arm around the shoulder. I think I read a comment from the the Southampton youth team coach uh, a few months yeah. back, and he basically just said that Shaw's this kind of character that constantly needs an arm around the shoulder, constantly needs, you know, bigging up and stuff like that. But if you're playing for Manchester United, you can't be afforded that luxury. I think it's not the first manager this has happened with with, with Shaw. So as much as I like him and, and how good a player he is, there's he probably issue, there's, there's, a, there's an issue there, and there's there's yeah. no smoke without fire. So I think I think it's time for you know maybe for Jose to to start thinking about another left back because yeah. as good as he is, it, it's not happening, is it? Neil, thank you very much for your call. Let's get to your comments here on uh, on YouTube. A lot of people saying the dude is spot on. I think he's referring to you then, Neil. Um, and then uh, I'll go on from Owen. He says, we're, we're still above Liverpool and Tottenham. Uh, they aren't as good as us at the minute. Uh, with the great challenge. Moyes, Moyes, oh, I'm mentioning Moyes. I won't even read that coming out. I'm not going to mention <laughs> Moyes on this show. Uh, but many comments coming in. Keep your call. Uh, keep your calls coming in, 0345 treble one seven six two five, uh, and let us know your, your ingredients to uh, to next season which is going to be the big question so we're talking yeah. about Fellaini and let's talk about next season the key ingredients you think we need to win the Premier League I'm going to give you a little time yeah. to have a think about that yeah. I want you to think about that as well the key ingredients for United to win the league Charles is on the phone are you okay Charles? Hi there mate all good? I'm very well mate now come on Charles what do you make of Maron Fellaini? I just think it's hilarious how we've got quality players like Marshall, not getting any. We've got quality players like Sean struggling to get a game. And Jose Mourinho is prioritising Fellaini, who probably couldn't get into any of the top teams in the Premier League, or any of the top teams in La Liga, any of the top teams in the French League. I don't see how Marilyn and Fellaini is getting into the PSG team. It is, it is a good point there you make. Would Fellaini get in any other top four team in the country, Jonathan? I suppose if you're going to, if you're going to counter the point, no, I appreciate definitely what you're saying. But if you're going to counter that point, of course, like Luke, Luke's a left back and Marcel's a left winger, so it's, it, we're comparing pears and apples, aren't we? Yeah, it's not the right phrase, but you know what I'm saying. Absolutely, um, I, I, but, I really do get that point. But then when you when you do think about it, you kind of look at all of the top teams in terms of the midfield qualities that yes. the midfielders bring. When you say Marilyn Fellaini is a defensive midfielder, he's not because every top team's got better defensive midfielders than him. When you yeah. say he's a central midfielder that controls the game, he's not because you can see in all of the top teams have better controlling midfielders than him. But he's if a match winner. Central, I'm playing devil's say, advocate. Oh, he's oh, a match oh, winner. Absolutely, absolutely. I understand. <laughs> you can say he's a match winner. But uh, if we were uh, playing better football, would we need Marilyn yeah. Fellaini coming off the bench at second no, and 75th yeah. minute to do, to do long ball football? Just 100%. No, you're 100% right. But well, that kind mm. of, again, that, that's tied in with the manager, isn't it? I mean, th I think the one yeah. thing Marouane has in his favour is, to be fair, he always seems to put a shift in when he does come on. You can see he's it's almost maximum effort, whereas some of our other midfielders, I mean, I, I hate to, to sort of pinpoint him again, but I'm not scapegoating him, but Pogba sometimes yeah. has seemed a bit lackadaisical this season in, in important games and you know the toys might have come out the pram and I think you counter that with Fellaini's attitude just on the pitch and and that's probably doing himself a favour with, with Mourinho but I, I do I 100% well. see your point I do see your point yeah Charles, then uh, yeah, let's look to the future yeah. and look to next season. Uh, the, the question yeah. we're asking now is the key ingredients the United need to win the Premier League next year. Um, you mentioned Martial. Would Martial be still in the squad next year? See, I think every United fan is hopeful that he will be. Uh, to be honest with you, it kind of goes to the point of last season, we all said Pep Guardiola is never going to win the league with the type of football he's playing. And now Pep Guardiola won the league with the exact type of football he's playing. You look at Liverpool and you say Liverpool are playing fantastic football, but look where they are in the league. They're not matching up in the league. But now they're in the Champions League final. It means they were better than the top teams in the world. I think we're now at that point in football where it's a completely new style of football. Everyone knows this. 
But what we're seeing is the teams that play the best football are winning the leagues. It's not the Jose Mourinho response anymore of, I can have the bullies in the game because the bullies in the games will get beaten by the Barcelonas. The bullies in the game will get beaten by the Real Madrid. The bullies in the game will get beaten by the Liverpools now. And Manchester United just shouldn't be a bully in the game anymore. They need to be a bully, but they also need to be the best football playing side in the league. And that's the, if, the, the if, problem if, is, if, Charles is speaking some great truth yeah, here. I've got great. to say, Daniel, it's what are you making of, uh, of what Charles has got to say? I think yeah, he's speaking I, absolute truth here. Yeah, he's speaking mm. a lot of sense. But I mean, we we, we did beat Liverpool and we, and we kept them quiet. We kept the best player in the league quiet this year. Uh, so there is a place for Mourinho's style, style of football. I do think he needs to adapt. We all know Mourinho's defence first, keep a clean sheet. Yes, he's got to utilise the likes of Rashford, Martial a bit more and just bring out their brilliance because they are brilliant. Mm. Uh, and I think he's got to adapt that for next season, bring in a few more players. But yeah. Mourinho's worked with an average defence at this level. Yeah. He's had a lot of injuries in defence and he's kept clean sheet after clean sheet after clean sheet. He's won games, we're in the FA Cup final, we finished second in the league. And I think if he can just adapt a little bit, concentrate on the defence, but yeah. then obviously bring out these attacking, flaring players. I think, you know, United are on for, you know, a big future and good things. I've got to say, Charles, thank you very much for your yeah. call there. Uh, make sure you do what Charles does. Give us a call, 0345 7625 If you're listening on the radio, this isn't live. But if you're watching on YouTube and Facebook, this is. Uh, if On the radio side of things, we've got to take a quick break. We'll be right back after this. And welcome back. The magic of radio there uh, and YouTube and uh, Facebook. Keep your calls coming in. 0345 117625. We'd love to have your say. We're talking about two main things today before we preview Brighton later on. It's Fellaini. Where are you in? Are you out with him? Do you still see him in the club? Uh, and your ingredients to win the league next summer. What do you think uh, needs to happen? We're speaking to Jonathan and Daniel about that before we speak to Sam. Uh, hi, Sam. You okay, mate? Yeah, I'm okay, I'm okay. How about yourself? Very well, mate. Talk to us then about the man that we're all speaking about. It seems to be speaking about him a lot. Marouan Fellaini. Marouan Fellaini must stay in the club, plainly because of the reason I am pro Mourinho. And secondly, I think, I disagree with Charles, what he was saying about playing this tiki-taka football. I believe in the Mourinho philosophy that we should be big stack bullies. And he's done it before and he can do it again. He's Premier League proven. He's won the Premier League. And yeah, Fellaini, it's not just that uh, he adds headers and he scores when we need him. He adds variety to our game. You know, Pep Guardiola, when it comes to last minute goals, there's only one one type of way he's going to score. And that's running to the byline, pulling it back into the penalty box and hoping that someone likes... <laughs> like, um, Silver's in the box to bang it in. They've, they've not had to rely on the last minute goal that often, have <laughs> they? That's been the mean, problem. They've been, Sam fa- is been five the nil. Because <laughs> Sam is completely... This, this, this is where United fans are at the moment. They are split. They are, yeah. You're either a Charles yeah. or you're a Sam. And that's what we need to know on, on the YouTube comments. Who, who do you believe in? What the, do you make of that? Uh, being a the, bully, the one, can it win the Premier League? The one thing I would say is if you look at... Of course at, it can. Yeah, if you look at the fact that, that the time frames that they've been managers at the respective Manchester clubs is comparable. They, they both came at the same time, Pep and Jose. And the stat that you've got to point to is that Pep has brought in 19 players or something to basically formulate his exactly. style and whereas Mourinho has brought in seven so that's basically a third so I do think if Mourinho gets the personnel he wants we could be very effective playing his style of football yeah and I do think the part of the problem with Jose is he knows United have got this expectation to play attractive football but he inherently is a pragmatic manager and part of the problem is I think he's trying to satisfy both uh, philosophies and sometimes when you try and do that and appease the fans you get lost, you get caught in limbo. Yep. I think that's part of Jose's problem. What did you make of that then? Uh, the, the ingredients that need to change, uh, Sam. You mentioned that you do believe in the Mourinho way, but is there certain players you'd like to see coming in the club? Yeah, that's another thing. I think right now, Mourinho's trying to play with a certain way where the the players need a certain level of intelligence. And I think players like Bailly and Luke Shaw, they need to get out of the club and... What we need to add is that bit of sizzle on the steak. Bye, though. No, Bye, he's not. Right Bae, he's got. A, a, he's got. A, a, do you think he needs to get out of the club? Bae, no chance. Bye, he's brilliant. He hasn't got a brain. I'm sorry. Not like Lindelof might not be there yet, but you can see when yeah. he's on the ball. Yeah, but those two. The imagine. But they could complement each other. I think those two as a potential partnership moving forward, if they can both stay fit and 
and catch up. You know, they'd yeah. be an amazing hybrid because you've got a real kind of Rio Vida thing going on Rio, there. Rio, I mean, they're no yeah, way yeah, near exactly. the level yet, but you could see they potentially could be in years to come. I mean, yeah, as well, true, Sam, but, um, go on then, Sam, final yeah. words then. Are you, you expecting final we... words, right mid, right, uh, right mid, we need James <laughs> Rodriguez oh. and centre mid for Adam and Angolan. We need that animal ferociousness yeah. in the centre mid. Like that, yeah, like that. Sam, thank you very much for your call. He split a lot of people on the yeah. comment section. <laughs> I think the buy comment has, uh, <laughs> has scared a lot of people off. Uh, but uh, it, it does show, the, the, Daniel, the kind of... The two sides of the United fans, there's ones that believe Mourinho can do it uh, with his style of play and the players that he's got. And then there's the other side of things, which was the Charles in the early section, who said that, you know, Mourinho has to change his style of football and we have to play more attacking. Do you, do you see it when, as a United fan you, yourself when you go about, you, you see these two different types of fans? Do you have a side? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong, I'd love to see a bit more attacking football. And I think, for me, Ferguson was, was the king of that, wasn't he? He adapted through the years to the, to the styles of football that came in came into the leagues as they came when Wenger came and European football and the different formations. And, and Ferguson was the king at adapting. But we're talking about Jose Mourinho here. The guy's won everything. I think he knows what he needs to do. He's built teams for years and years and years. And yes, I think he will try and adapt a little bit to please the fans, to you know to compete with the likes of the football with Liverpool and... Mm-hmm. and um, Man City, but the guy's done it. He, he, he kept Mo Salah and Liverpool quiet this year and they, they were second in the league. So you've got to trust in Mourinho and, and it, it's a massive progress from when he first took over. So That's give him time and, he, and he, will, he will compete. He deserves definitely another year, doesn't he? I mean, if you just look at it, I think United fans get lost and they don't look at things, I hate to use the word pragmatic because that's his style of football, but you've got to look at it pragmatically as well, purely based on the results. I know it's not entertaining sometimes, but it's better than under Van Gaal, so I'd yep, say we're yep. progressing in style. And also the results. Now, if we sat here in 12 months' time and we're still 15 points off City in the league, then it's a conversation. Then yep. it's, well, we he's haven't been the top actually... six, hasn't he? He's been every team in the top six. He's been every season. team in the top six, but if we're still the same distance away yeah. from City, we have to close the gap next year. Like you said, 100%, if, yeah. if we're five points off him next year and we've kind of pushed him, then then again, you've got to say, well, maybe the next season he's... But we just got to accept that they're miles ahead, unfortunately. I hate to say it. Mm. Unfortunately, we do. You agreed it's how United are going to win the Premier League next year. Nathan's on the line. You okay, Nathan? Yeah, I'm right, lad. Uh, good to speak to you, Nathan. You're with Daniel, myself, and Jonathan. Uh, let's have a chat about Manchester United. What do you want to say? Well, um, it's mainly about our defence has been absolutely atrocious most of the season, I'd say. And, and is there someone who, who's let the defence down? No, it's, it's, a, it's a collective unit in my nation, as in. So basically, when it comes, you know, we all know how great De Gea is and everything. So mm. when it comes to our expected goals, he's stopped 13% of them. And if you compare that to Courtois, who's, you know, the Chelsea lad, he stopped 0. 0.4. So, you know, De Gea is basically our defence. Oh, is but that is can, that new stat thing that Sky brought in? The expected... Yeah, like it's a thing that people use to see, you know, how good goals. our chance is being made and how... Yeah, that's, right. and basically the fact that De Gea stops about 100% more than most goalkeepers does, it kind of you know, shows how he is our basically defence. Yeah. So really what do you want in the defence then, Nathan? What do you want to happen next season? It's it's the fullbacks first need to be changed. I just I genu- I can't even defend Ashley Young and Valencia anymore. Like it's at a point where they don't really contribute anything. Nothing and at it all. Seems, and it seems yeah, and it seems our game plan is to give it to Young and Valencia and not cross the ball. But you watch them cross the ball, and it seems like they can't even do that properly half the time. He got Fellaini's goal on on Saturday. Sunday. Yeah, but that was once. You you watch it back and you see Valencia put so many poor balls in it, and uh, and Ashley Young. That was the first. Maybe the second ball he put in that game, you thought, oh, I have to invite him on. I mean, he's a very passionate goal to it, uh, making sure that... Do you, do, you, do you still believe in Mourinho? Oh, no, I've stopped believing since the, since the Sevilla game. That was, like, final straw. <laughs> the Mourinho, Mourinho <laughs> lost your play. trust in, uh, after the Sevilla game. And there's no yeah, way back for it, you now. I think some No, because I was, I was really forgiving up to that point because I thought, oh, it's our biggest game of the season. He's got to throw, throw it out. Then he just starts Fellaini and puts Rush out of position and just changes everything. It just like... It was a weird one, that. Yeah, it was a weird one. It doesn't bode well. It's, it seems like these are things with him that he's not going to change, though. And everyone has got Mourinho who doesn't change his ways. But some of the players that, needed to stand up and be counted that game. Yeah, I get the whole... The Fellaini decision was bizarre to bring him in after we played pretty well. I can't remember the game before, but we played well. Was it Liverpool? 
Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, it was but, a Liverpool game. But the whole change, like putting Martial or Rashford on either side, they've they're top class players. They've got to perform if they're on the left or right. To me, that's irrelevant. That one, the the Fellaini was bizarre, <laughs> but some of the players have to take. You know, he, he'd put us in a position where we we draw nil nil away, aren't we? Mm-hmm. So we're in a position then to go and win that game, and some of the players let us down. I remember particularly Pogba that game; it was disheartening. He came on. That's his. That's his stage. Then he's a world class player. He should be owning that game. He came on and strolled around the pitch. So yes, I agree with you, but there were there were other circumstances at play there. I think. Do call in, get your say. Oh three four five treble one seven six two five. Come and have your uh, say on the full time devils takeover. This is your chance to talk about whatever you want. Uh, Matthew's on the line. We'll speak to you soon, Matthew. Uh, we're talking Fellaini. We're also mentioning Brighton later on. And I want to bring in this one. Um, the unsung hero. Manchester United did their awards the other night. Um, uh, McTominay getting the manager's um, <laughs> play, uh, player of the year. Well, fair enough. Do you agree <laughs> with that? Um, Matic winning goal of the season. And David De Gea for the fourth time winning player's player. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that. But your unsung hero, please. Who is the player that didn't get any credit uh, the other night that you'd like to give a bit of credit to? Put it in the comments section on Facebook, on YouTube, if you're listening. We aren't live, by the way, so do not call in. But if you're watching on YouTube and Facebook, we are 0345 treble one seven six two five. Uh Matthew's on the line. Okay, Matthew, all right? Hello, gents. How are we? I'm very well, Matthew. Uh, I've gotten here that uh, on your little comment section, everything you need for next season. So you're going to take the lead on this one? Go ahead, mate. Let's talk about the ingredients that we need. I think I just tweeted here as well, but I have to talk about it. Matthew, are you on speakerphone, mate? Uh, We just can't hear you if you're on speaker. Yeah, give me a second, Tal. Give Give you a second. Uh, (laughs) Let let us know. Uh, I'm back. He's back, back, Matthew. We can hear you now. (laughs) Slide and clear. Now you can take the lead, Matthew. Yeah, I did I did tweet to you, but once I heard that we had to ship off Baye and keep Fellaini, I, I had to keep <laughs> yeah. Everybody relax now, everybody relax. Matthew's on. Everybody's not going nowhere. Fellaini, if you're going to hold the club to ransom, there's the door, mate. Say yeah. for Anthony Martial, one right. of the best talents in the world. I'd hate to see him leave. I'd hate to see him go to another Premier League club. But if he hasn't signed a new contract, he might not want to play for us. So yeah. there's the door as well, mate. Um, all we really need is consistency. We can win the title. We can win the title. We've not many. We've not many changes from what we had this season. All we need is consistency. We, as a fan base, we need to stick together. We need mm-hmm. to be a bit more focused like and consistent month. ourselves. <laughs> shout, out, shout out all of these guys. All of these guys. I think I'm a bit more active myself on social media, and I have seen this season enough to turn me off football from our own mm-hmm. fan base. Yeah. It's, it's not yeah. good enough. One bad result, and we're back. Calling for Jose's head. Calling for major changes to the squad. It's not good enough. Like Couple of world class players. <laughs> What's your, what's your Twitter, mate? I'll follow you. I like your positivity. <laughs> Mathematics 6, mate. M-A-T-T-H, M-A-T-I-C. Don't follow him, Matthew. You're speaking good sense here. <laughs> uh, you, you, no, Fel- no. Fellaini, then, is there anything that you could see what Fellaini could do for United next season? Or is it just as simple as saying yeah, no, he's not no, good? No, I'm not going to... I won't disrespect Fellaini. Look, he, he won us the game against Arsenal. He has been an asset when we've needed him and when we've been a bit clueless. He's come on. He's put in a shift. He's been, he's been a bit aggressive. He's been what you want from Fellaini. We don't expect him to be doing Marseille turns and whatnot. Even though we pulled out Bang a couple on, of yeah. those this season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he does when you least he, he expect us, it, though. Exactly. He gave us what Jose asked of him. Yeah. I don't think it's going to be enough to take us to the next level. He will only ever be a squad player. Mm-hmm. But... Yeah, I'm not. I'm not mad at Fellaini. But no. if you're going to hold the club to ransom and say you're in a strong position, mate, then you know I'm sure Everton will have you back. But <laughs> <laughs> no. Matthew, Matthew, can you give us your unsung hero then of this season? Uh, so someone that didn't get an award, not David De Gea or McTominay, uh, someone that you think is really putting a shift for United this year. You know what? I'm going to go with Marcus Rashford again. No, no, I'm going to give it to one of the Mank boys, uh, Jesse or Marcus. Mm-hmm. Um, all of this talk about um, Rashford not getting a minute and whatnot, he's kept his head down, he's scored a, a hat full of goals, he's played most minutes out of anyone. He's stayed focused for a young man under 20. I think that's amazing. And mm-hmm. Jesse Lingard, I remember a couple of seasons ago myself wondering if mm-hmm. he was what yeah. we needed at our club. 100%. And he's been, a shine, he's been a shine enlightenment. So hats after them two boys. They'd be my own song heroes, man. Yeah. Thank you very much for your call yeah. Matthew top man a legend uh, uh, coming in is putting it straight and I think a lot of mm. people on the YouTube comments agree with him uh, over to you guys then before we speak to another couple of callers uh, including Jay and John stay mm. there um, 
Your unsung heroes. Unsung heroes. Uh, yeah, I've got to agree. I mean, we were talking in the car, weren't yeah. we? I think you're going to say... Romelu. Romelu. <laughs> but uh, I'll probably go before that and say, yeah, Jesse. I, I was, um, as uh, the chap there just said, I was a doubter. I'm not going to lie. I once I was a hater. As right. the kids would say, well, I was a doubter. I think but, everyone was a doubter. They weren't sure. Yeah. He, were, he divided opinion, but he's he been sensational opinion, this season. He has. He's stepped up. He scored amazing goals. His all-round performances have, have improved. He keep, you know, his his ball retention's a lot better. He creates things. He's just been for me. It's been a revelation. It's like having a new player, to be honest. And that Fergie quote that came out to coincide with his kind of surge, if you remember yeah. about him yeah. saying. When he's 20, he's going to be a John Tiganar. When he's twenty four, he's got the same build, and yep. that's when he's going to hit his peak. And Fergie just being a prophet as usual. <laughs> uh, and and you, I agreed with you in the car on Romelu. Yeah, for me, Lukaku. The amount of stick he got, you know, the beginning of the season, uh, well, halfway through the season, I should say. I mean, expectation on on his shoulders with the price tag and stuff. And I just think he's come in. He's not the greatest striker in the world, but he's come with a big price tag. But instead of you know going under, he's worked his nuts off and he's got mm. to a level where he's really starting to improve as a player. He's a young player and he's only going to get better and better. And he scored 27 yeah. goals. What more do you want? Exactly. Yeah. Right. Thank you very much for them. Your unsung heroes, please, in the comment section. If you're listening on the radio, this isn't live, but it is live on YouTube and Facebook on the Full Time Devils account. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back after this. That was a very quick break, wasn't it? Uh, we're live on YouTube and Facebook. Thank you very much for getting your calls in. Uh, we're going to speak to Jay and John and Jake. All, all the Jays are calling in uh, and uh, very shortly, uh, as well as talking about Brighton for a time being. But this was really caused a bit of a storm because we're getting lots and lots of calls in about Fellaini oh. next season because uh, <laughs> Jay's on the phone. Jay, you okay, mate? Yeah, I'm okay. How are you doing, Jay? Talk to us about Fellaini, your opinion of him. Uh, I don't think he is a eye-catching player. Um, he does offer us a plan B when we need it. Um, but with his recent comments, I would be like, see you later, out the door. And I just don't think a club with our stature needs a player of his ability bringing us to that level when there are players out there that we could bring in and could do a job. Do you, do you agree, oh. Jonathan? It's, it's hard, isn't it? Because it becomes a bit of a pride thing then. It's like we all get a bit defensive, don't we, when we hear the, the quotes. And yeah, I'm, of course, one of those that wants to d defend the sanctity of the club and everything. And, and in the past, you know, it's been players like Ronaldo that's, I not quite say he's held us to ransom, but the Ronaldos and Roonies that have a little bit, we've had to pander to them to, to retain their services in a contract. And now it's Fellaini. And we're all getting a little bit our knickers in a twist over it. And I get it. I do get yeah, it. Yeah, I but remember the times. The last time to... something like this really happened was Rooney, Rooney or, yeah. or Ronaldo. And you, you'd, you'd admit it's... you'd be a different story. But Fellaini... Yeah, it's, it's, and that's why it's hard for us all to swallow. We're like, wait, Fellaini's holding us to ransom now. But I just think clearly Mourinho thinks that he has a value. And therefore, maybe we've got to, swap, we've got to take, a, take it for the team on this well. one. Mourinho's come out and said he wants him. He's been very public about it. So yeah. I can't really blame Fellaini, his agent, for saying certain things. I just think Was it's it Fellaini, his games. agent, that said it? I think it would be a, you had the advice from the agent oh, and stuff like that, don't you? You can't blame him, but when you, it feels like when the manager has top players there, like Martial and Shaw, he, and the fans want to see these types of players, he doesn't play them. But people like Fellaini, who we don't want to see, he, <laughs> he sticks up for and flies the flag. Well, that's like, that's, that's Mourinho, isn't it? No, he's actually weird he, he's Mourinho, isn't it? He's the biggest it? contrarian in the world, isn't he? He's like, <laughs> whatever you think might happen, Mourinho will do the opposite. You can bank on it. You can really do. Uh, thank you very much, Jay, for your call there. We're going to go go through these calls now. Let's go to John. Are you okay, John? Yeah, not, not bad. What are you but thinking then about uh, the players at Old Trafford at the minute? I think there's a few there what we could get rid of. But let's, I'm looking forward to next season, but our style of play has got to change next season slightly. We've got to get that ball forward quicker. When we play, we're too slow, pedantic. By the time we get it forward, the opposing team's got 11 players behind the ball. <laughs> we need to be quicker. Our, going forward, we, we, I think we really are slow getting the ball forward this season. And that's what makes football look a bit boring than what it is. And what do you think about the, the players that apparently will be leaving the squad, like Marshall and, and Flames? Do you want to keep Luke Shaw, etc.? Or do you I think you need Shaw. to... I think Shaw, what, before his injury, was having, he was having a good... You know, when he broke his leg, I thought he was doing well. I think he, he's got a plane. We need the left back. It's like playing Ashley Young there. 
Well, if you play a young against Real Madrid Barcelona, he's going to get absolutely caned. He pocketed Salah. To yeah, be he fair. did all right with Salah. Too yeah. fair. <laughs> I think Ashley Young's been one of the best players this season. You've got, I think that's one who's not. But can recognized. you win the Premier League with Ashley Young? <laughs> We have, we have, I mean, we have, but there's many moves to go. As a left back, as a left back, can we, can we win the Premier League? Us winning the league, we have. If we don't start change our style of play, we are so far behind City and Liverpool. The way they attack, score goals. Yeah, the defence is a lot better. That line there, though, can I just say, can I just hold you up there, John? That line there is not a line we want to hear as United fans. We are so far behind Liverpool and City. We can't be saying that, though. I mean, that's what I mean, and I understand that you're correct, but how have we got ourselves into this position that we can just accept that? I don't don't accept it. I mean, last night I was gutted that Liverpool went through. I thought, oh, no. Well, I hope they absolutely get hammered in the (laughs) final. Ronnie will save us. I hate to see Real Madrid win, even because of the government team. But I'd rather have Real Madrid win it than Liverpool. Oh, absolutely. Bring Ron- on, Ronaldo, bring on Madrid, Ronaldo. Please. Hopefully Ronaldo steps up to the mark again. John, you're a top man. Thank you very much for calling. The <laughs> Fellaini debate continues, but I just want to uh, chat. Uh, Jake, uh, you'll be uh, coming on the line very soon. Just stay there. Uh, I want uh, Jonathan's ingredients first, please. How United are going to do better than this season next year. Um, naturally, he's got to be backed in the market. Uh, we're probably going to have to bring in you know, arguably two full backs, at least one. Um, certainly another central midfielder, another potentially another attacker, because for whatever reason, he doesn't seem to to fancy Martial or Rashford as a, as a backup to Romelu. So maybe another attacking option when Lukaku, you know, isn't fit or can't play there. Um, we just need a few players. We need... <sighs> Yeah, I mean that that's that's the obvious thing, but yeah, maybe Mourinho does have to look at himself, but I just don't he's not gonna Mourinho ain't changing, I'm nope. afraid. That's we've all got to accept it. Like people say he's got to appease the fans. I don't think he will. I just think maybe the plays he brings in will enable the style to become more attractive because I think there's an element of him not trusting the personnel at the moment and that's making him even more cautious because he don't trust the players we have. So he's got to bring in the players he does trust to open up a bit more. Yeah. Daniel, we'll get to yours just after we have the final call on Fellaini. It's Jake. You okay, Jake? Hey, how you doing, guys? We're very well, Jake. Uh, you're the final caller today to speak about Fellaini. Uh, the ball's in your court. Well, in my opinion, I don't care whether he comes or goes. As long as his new contract's not a ridiculous wage, <laughs> anything more than 90k is just... Absolutely ridiculous. I really it, think it, it is. I think he's on. What's he on at the moment? He's on a decent, fair bit at the moment. I wouldn't be surprised if it is around 90k or more. It'd be more. I think he's asking for a near nearer the 200 mark. I think. 200. 150 oh, can to you 200. imagine? Well, We'd because be it, a laughing stock. 200 grand a week for Fellaini. Yeah, but if he goes on a free, he's gonna. He could go to flipping Turkey and get 250 a week. Or do you know what I mean? That's so. He's now going to hold. He is going to hold us to ransom on the wage. Definitely. If that's the case, then just let him go. Obviously. Yeah, I mean, what would you what would you say so there, Jake? Much of a miss. Yeah, I'd, I'd say if he's asking for two hundred k, then let him go. I'd rather <laughs> just sign give give Angel Gomez a, a contract for one hundred and fifty k a week. <laughs> <laughs> well, why not the youth players? Uh, let's speak. Uh, let's speak slightly about the the youth team. Uh, Mourinho said he was never uh, the the sort of mm. people that were going to bring in. Oh, Mourinho doesn't play youth. He's given McTominay. He's uh, manager player of the year. Yeah. Uh, you just brought it up then, Jake. Uh, Daniel, you were a youth team. What's it like as a player at the youth side of things for Manchester United? Is it is the pressure to it? Is it exciting? Do you just want to play football? I think at that I mean, when I was there, when you're 16, 17, 18, 19, whatever age you are, you, it's nothing to you. It's, you just, it's almost normal. So the pressure doesn't, you don't feel pressure at all. I didn't, and I'm sure the, the lads coming through don't. It's, it, it's great to be in and around training with the likes of players. I mean, I was with the, the Beckhams, the Skulls, the Gigs, and even the lads coming through today with the players they're surrounded by. I, I just think they'll take it in their stride, and, and if they're good enough, they'll be given their chance. And Mourinho's proven he'll give him the chance I mean I hadn't to be honest with you I'd, I'd not heard much about McTominay before before this season and yep. and although it's a bit of a strange one Mourinho giving him the, the player of the season award I think he, when he came in he was a breath of fresh air and he did absolutely fantastic so he, he looks like to have a bright future at United yeah um, thank you very much for your call there Jake um, let's talk about, about your ingredients Daniel how do you think United can improve next year do you need certain players to come in 
Um, and does Mourinho need to play a different formation, etc.? What do you think should happen? I don't think Mourinho needs to play a, for, a different formation. I just think he needs to figure out how to get the likes of Martial, the likes of Rashford, getting them the ball early so they can produce what they can do and we can, we've all seen what they can do. I think it's just a few tweaks here and there. I think he does need to add two full-backs. I think it's key. As good as Valencia and Young have been, they've been fantastic. Young's been great this year, in my opinion. I just think they're ageing. And football nowadays, modern day football, fullbacks are key. So if we can get two big name fullbacks, young, who can just you know light the league up, and and, and that can create so much, and, so much and more also for the team. Be allowed to progress more yeah. up the pitch. Yeah. Sometimes a bit more so freedom. Yeah, a bit mm-hmm. more freedom. Which maybe if we get, you know, a bit more solid at centre back and mm. another. I think we need another centre midfielder to play along Matic and Definitely. give Pogba the freedom to go and you know do whatever he wants to do. Yeah, and Herrera has been positive, hasn't he, towards he has. the end of the season? I mean, there's, there are positives. I think we there we, is positives. There's a lot of positives. We do focus a bit on the doom and gloom, don't we? Luke Shaw's a, a disappointment. It'd be nice if that would work out, but maybe it won't. But yeah, if he brings in a couple of the younger players you mentioned there, Gomez, the the chap there, and Chong, isn't it? If it always seems to appease fans and satiate fans a little bit more if. You bring in a few new faces as well because you can you can say then that he's building towards the future, can't he? So if yeah. he adds a couple more to the likes of Mac Tomine, who likes oh, we've got those. a couple of young fullbacks coming through as, as well, haven't we? We've got Twin yes. Zabi, we've got yeah. Fosu Mensa, both out on loan. So I mean, there's if potential there back, as well. Yeah. Bring them back in, play mm. them. I, I, be nice if he does that. It would be nice. And that is what's going to happen maybe next season. Uh, and Fellaini will let you know, full-time Devils and excess manager, will be, uh, will be there to tell you the, uh, the breaking news when we get it, if he's going or if he's staying. Uh, and now towards uh, Brighton. We've got about uh, four minutes to talk about Brighton. I think that's kind of all it needs because <laughs> it's upsetting in a weird way that it's coming towards the back end of the season. And the thing is, it's not even a battle for second place now. We're, we're doing quite well. We're, mm. we're stretched above Liverpool with a game in hand. We can beat Brighton and it can be a nice little comfortable end. Do you, do you miss the uh, the nail-biting end to a season, uh, Jonathan, this year? I mean... Yeah, yeah, it's a shame, isn't it? The, the, I mean, the Arsenal game was a weird one. It just felt... It was very weird. Yeah, it was probably it was... one of the most meaningful Arsenal-United games we've had in, in years. There was nothing really there for either club. Yeah. Um, we've seen some big ones over the years, haven't we, Daniel? Oh yeah, I remember watching a few over the years and the cracking games. I remember that was it seven two and York. Was it seven two? Oh, the eight two. That one was it eight two? Yeah, well, that was a great one. I remember that one. It was it was, but, but yeah, it was a bit. I mean, it was a class act what they did with with Wenger before the game. Yeah. I thought Manchester United, you, know, you know, showed what what they're all about there with Ferguson and Mourinho. But yeah, it was a, it wasn't the greatest of games. Nothing much to play for, and both both teams have something else to focus something on this else season. To focus on that was the key, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. It was flat as a result, and the flatness of the fans translated onto the pitch and vice versa. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it was just a very weird affair. We do need to build momentum, though. We need to win the next few games just to yeah. take it into so, the final. Yeah, is that what you're, final, what you're yeah. looking for now yeah, in the, your top? Is to build, yeah, these is, yeah. these players going. should be playing for that final place, yeah, shouldn't they? Now, yeah. they, they need to show intensity to, to be sharp for the final. But yeah. also, to, they're all playing for places, aren't they? Mm-hmm. Indeed. Really? Uh, is there any key players that, um, like Lingard and, and, and Martial? Where, what do you think is going to Martial over the next couple of weeks? Is he going to have the space in the final? It's hard, isn't it, to say? I mean... It, <laughs> There's certain signs that are emerging that aren't positive. He's such a great player, isn't he? I just just do fear it might not be, it might just might not work out. Sometimes yep. it's the wrong manager, the wrong time, the wrong club for for a certain player, and it's feeling like that. But I hope I'm proved completely wrong. Also for the fans, uh, Brighton on a Friday is <laughs> a difficult one. Um, fair play to oh, I thought you meant it's a good night out. Oh, no, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm sure there'll be some United fans are going there for the game and then a nice little night out afterwards. You feel for the fans in a way, don't you, Daniel? I mean, it's a it's a bit of a hefty trek, and then getting back will be difficult. Yeah, but I mean that's just modern day football, isn't it? The games and evening fans games. For, the fans first, second. Yeah, I mean it's it's not it's not the best way, but it, it it does seem to the way that the football world's going. And yeah, it's a shame, but I mean uh, these fans are hardcore; they love it, and I'm sure they won't have a too much trouble coming up to Manchester and watching the game and having a night out like you say I'm sure he won't (laughs) Uh, right gentlemen we're coming to the end uh, of the show I want to thank you both for for joining us but Daniel what are you up to at the minute uh, and what is your what's happened since you've sort of retired as a player Uh, what's keeping you going yeah, I mean, completely different world now. Uh, I'm a financial financial advisor with uh, St James's Place, working uh, across the road. Yeah, there. not it's far from not far from you, and it's like completely different to, to football, but it's something I've always, you know, really enjoyed doing. I get to look after a, a few young footballers as well, so I keep myself involved in, in football and, and looking after, you know, you know, people's finances. Do you have which good are, pieces of advice for young footballers when you meet them and you speak to them. 
It, Words of wisdom. <laughs> yeah, you try and help them as much as you can, but I mean, when they're earning the kind of money they're earning, they, they need as much help as they can get. So yeah. uh, it's, it's good that enjoy your life, but obviously yeah. look after your money. So yeah. at some point, you know, in the future, when you do finish playing football, you've got enough to, you know, to live off at least. Yeah, I suppose you never think about that. As such a young player getting mm. such an amount of money at a, at a certain age, yeah. you know, some players could even go one way or the other. But we've, and there's, we've a, there's a lot of cowboys yourself. out there as well. I mean, I mean, there's a lot of cowboys trying to take the money off these boys and get invest in this, invest in that. So it's good to be part of a reputable company and yep. uh, helping these young lads uh, to prepare for their futures. Jonathan, yourself, yeah. what are you up to over the next couple of weeks? Uh, I've got a, a few, as a, some of the viewers may know, I do cover a bit of combat sports, boxing, MMA, oh, so right. I've got a couple of potential UFC events that I'll be covering in the next couple of months. So, yeah, look out for that. Obviously, on Twitter, you'll find all all that kind of content coming out. But uh, I was going to say, uh, an interesting, just sort of tying in with that financial side of things about looking after mm. self for the future. There was a, there was a funny story with Fergie, wasn't they? Not taking the shine here, Joe. No, no, gonna... take, take take the shine away. <laughs> I was going to say, you know, the uh, when he wouldn't let you buy a. Oh yeah, it was back in. I was, I was not eighteen at the time. I, I had to. I wanted to buy my own place, but you know, when I was at United, obviously. I had to go and ask the gaffer if I was allowed to buy my own place. Were you like, and Fergie said, ask me? <laughs> well, I had to. It was, it was part of, the, I don't know, part of the contract. I spoke to the youth team guys and I had to go knock on his door, ask if I'd buy my own place. And he said no. I was like, well, okay, why? And he goes, well, I want you to have three months worth of cooking lessons with the chef before you start buying your own place. So three months of, you know, getting into training early, doing some cooking lessons with the chef, and then I was allowed to buy my own car. But you're a good, you cook, what, you're a good cook his now. Pa- his pasta's still rubbish. <laughs> his pasta's still rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll thank you very much uh, and Jonathan thank you as well thank you to Full Time Devils hit subscribe uh, if you're listening we're coming to the end of the show thank you for listening uh, and drop this video a like we'll be back next Thursday uh, and uh, all the best for Brighton against United thank you very much for watching